Hello again. We're back for another vlog. Um, yeah, it's cold outside. Uh, about 2.30 in the morning-ish. Yeah, it's been nice and chilly today. Uh, woke up with a nice amount of snow. Uh, it's a very, let's see, it's a very clear night. So this is much like I'm used to out in uh, Arizona. And so people have been complaining today. It's like, oh, this is really cold. I'm like, yeah, this is starting to get towards uh, my level of nice and chilly. Um, it's been funny listening to the news. It's like this morning, uh, all the schools started shutting down. And it's like watching, it's like all of a sudden, all the schools are shutting down. And OSU, uh, the local college, shuts down and calls our phones, text, email, yeah. And says, transit's not running. And one of my friends, uh, one of the local furs, is one of the bus drivers. And he was supposed to be on shift this morning. So immediately I get in the chats. I'm like, hey, dude, guess what? You don't have work this morning. Three hours later. Oh, cool. Thanks. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways. So I was talking a little bit yesterday about the winds. And I forgot to tell you about the microbursts. The microbursts are sudden, really stupidly strong um, winds, like 90 mile an hour straight lines that come up absolutely nowhere. It's insane. And my hometown, Perkins, has been hit by them twice since I've lived here the past, let's see, it's 2017, 12 years in July. That's happened twice. Uh, the first year that it happened, I was uh, sitting at the house. So I was babysitting uh, my next oldest nephew, Carson. And all of a sudden, the house and the fireplace started howling. And my mom and my sister were out, I don't remember where. And so I grab Orion, the dog, and Carson and go shove them in what was at the time being our little tornado shelter which was a little powder room over by my parents' room. And the wind's just howling and howling and howling for like a good solid few minutes. And it stops, just suddenly. So it's like, okay. Kind of sneak out of the bathroom. The house is still here. All of a sudden the phone starts ringing. It's my neighbor and I answer the phone. She's like, hey Haley, uh, are you doing all right? Uh, yeah, we're doing pretty good. You need to go look outside. Your trampoline's wrapped around a tree. What? So I go outside. We have this big tree house. It was tipped over. Uh, well, it's not really a tree house. It's like the playground forts. It had been pulled out of the ground and tipped over. Uh, the trampoline was wrapped around a tree. Um, the netting and all. And... My dad's really big, heavy grill had been sucked off the porch and was on top of my mom's chimney. Both are fairly heavy, so the wind had managed to suck both of those off the porch, and the giant grill smashes the little chimney. It's like a little fireplace. So, yeah. <laughs> I call my mom. This is like kind of the early iPhone age. And I call her, I'm like, you guys might want to come home. There's a lot of damage, and I don't know what to do. And, um... There was another microburst that ended up happening last year. Um, late summer, early fall, was it? Yeah, somewhere probably around the summer. And my mom calls up, she's like, do you guys have much wind? No, not that bad. Um, the tree house knocked over again. What? We had three foot, two, three foot stakes that were in the ground, like you had to drill them down. And he had pulled those out of the ground and knocked the tree house over. I'm not sure if the grill got knocked off this time. Um, it pulled up part of the roof that my parents had just got fixed. They had their roof redone. They had a new patio put on, concrete poured, and it peeled part of the roof. It's just one of those, holy crap, the wind is scary strong. It's one of those you fear nature kind of things. So it's just like the wind through Oklahoma gets absurdly strong. Yeah, Perkins is also um, the hometown to Pistol Pete. And if you are from OSU, you'll know Pistol Pete's the mascot. Well, Pistol Pete has um, 
very interesting background. He was a, I think he was a marshal. He was a law enforcement of some sort for this area, uh, northern Oklahoma, Texas kind of area. Well, the story of Pistol Pete was, as a kid, he watched his dad get gunned down by this um, ragtag group of men. And so the neighbor comes over and he's like, you have an old man's curse placed upon you now to where you have to avenge your father. And so the kid goes off and goes to, um, may have been Fort Sill, and goes there and learns how to be a sharpshooter. And he surpasses all the tests and the, um, the military guy says, you've passed all our tests. It's like, you've done so well. We're going to nickname you Pistol Pete. Um, yeah. So yeah. Frank Pete Eaton, if I'm correct, is his full name. So yeah, Pistol Pete did all the stuff. He was kind of on both sides of the law, depending on who you were. Um, uh, during the summers, I used to be a, t uh, be a tour guide for his house, which is down Perkins at Little Centennial Park. But during off season, I took care of the canary that would be at the tour house. This is a cute little canary, loved to sing, and he was just a sweet little birdie. Because like, um, before I worked there, they would leave him in the house, and the house they'd turn off the AC and stuff. So when I started working there, the poor guy sun bleached himself and was plucking out his feathers. And she's like, oh, I have birds at home. And it's like, so I was really attached to this little canary. Uh-oh, did I lose my cam? Hello? Uh-oh. Yay. Okay, there we go. Am I still on? Phew. Yay. All right. So, yeah. Yes, I'm a Dr. Pepper fiend. Um... So yeah, Pistol Pete's bird, uh, I got to take care of him. So I took care of him, he was plucking himself, bleaching himself, and it's like, he was in such bad shape. And so I was taking care of him. Eventually the tour house forgot to ask for him to come back. So I just kept the bird. It was really sad, he passed away last year. My dad calls me up and says, Haley? And this is when I moved off to college so I was un unable to bring the bird with me. He's like, Petey died. What? He fell head first into his water. I just checked on him and he wasn't singing anymore. I was like, oh, my little Petey died. So yeah, I'm really attached to my birds. Um, I also have two canaries, Sting and Roxanne, down there. Roxanne is a little special. I think the bird got dropped on its head too many times because she would scream at the wall non-stop. That was a very interesting bird. Uh, Sting was the funny bird. Very good at flying, but liked to do tricks. Um, we used to play video games like Assassin's Creed, and the birds loved watching Assassin's Creed because um, Ezio liked to scream like a bird of prey. And so the birds would start chirping, chir -dee 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 -dee, or, or screaming. Yeah, that would get obnoxious. But they like to watch uh, Assassin's Creed. So Sting figured out how to do flips off the perches. That was interesting. A very active bird. Um, I promised on social media earlier that I would talk about a uh, <laughs> very interesting story. So I'll get into that real quick. You know the whole midnight adventure things to Walmart? Yeah, tonight's one of those nights. It's kind of slippery out. Like, the snow that had partially melted today was frozen over. It never got really above freezing today. So it's like what little sun was able to melt off didn't last very long. Um, we had a bit of a mishap at, at home where one of the toilets clogged up. We're trying to get it done, and it's like, it won't fix itself. And it's like hot water, soap. We tried everything. For whatever reason, we didn't have a plunger. So it was my turn to go out to town, or into town, to get 
um, stuff from Walmart since Ian had already been out in the day. It's like, and he was kind of feeling puny. He's like, do you mind going out? And I'm like, okay, whatever. And he's not a fan of slick conditions either. So it's like, I'm, I'm a little more used to driving on icier roads. So I go to Walmart and I'm searching around for the stupid plungers. I go to plumbing. You'd think kind of back in like home repair stuff, it'd be over there. Nope. Okay, wander around, wander around. Where the bloody hell are these plungers? Going over, I'm like, fine, screw it. We'll go over to the toilet paper and see if they're over there. Mm hmm. They're over in toilet paper. So, you know, the whole um, stereotypical plunger you see in cartoons and stuff. The, uh, the flat one with the kind of red base. I found out those are not toilet plungers. Those are what are called uh, sink and bathtub plungers. So it's like, oh, so that's what those are. And like the toilet plungers are the black ones with kind of the curved edge, like at the bottom of the base. So it was, it was interesting to learn about that. But yeah, there was this game, um, some of hers and I played back a few months ago where we were talking about the strange things you'd pick up at Walmart to make the cat, the person at the register go, uh, <laughs> this was one of those situations. I picked up a plunger, um, crap, why can't I think of it now? NyQuil, there we go. It's like the, the nighttime cold cough medicine, whatever, NyQuil and uh, donuts, because I wanted the donuts in the breakfast in the morning. I'm glad I went to self-checkout because I would have gotten some very curious looks. <laughs> yeah, end up getting flagged anyways for the NyQuil. It's just one of those, why is NyQuil one of the contraband substances that have to be ID'd for whatever? I think I heard the story once that someone used to hear about uh, kids snuffing that, it's like, glue and it's all sorts of stuff. It's just stupid. Um, another kind of funny thing uh, Ian and I were talking about yesterday. It's like uh, we celebrate monthly anniversaries. Why do couples do that? Monthly anniversaries or whatever. Um, it's like you go monthly and then when you get to hit the year point it's like every year and so on and so forth. But <laughs> We had a bit of a mix up. We'd been pretty good about um, celebrating our anniversary on the fourth of the month. Well, for whatever reason, between August and November, we screwed up and started calling it the fifth of the month instead of the fourth for our anniversary. And we realized this yesterday we're talking and he's like pulled up the calendar and he's like wait what day did we say the anniversary was on the fifth shows in the calendar we have it set for the fourth no that can't be scroll back to uh eight, um uh last year and so we're kind of sitting there going wait do we really screw that up and it's like we looked at the other months and it's like stuff we had planned for actually the fourth and it's like when we celebrated it so it's just one of those, how the hell do we end up doing that? It's like, we're talking about it. It's like, you know what? Screw it. We'll go ahead and stay with the fifth because it's just too hard to uh, remember now <laughs> to change it to the fourth again. Uh, oh yeah, I wanted to do a quick shout out to uh, Axel Shane. He's one of my furry friends that was giving me some uh, stuff to talk about. He was kind of giving me ideas and things. He was like, he was one of my buddies. We were on voice chats last night and just kind of bouncing off each other, uh, bouncing ideas. So kind of back again on another ramble. Sherlock season four is out. That first episode, I promise no spoilers. That first episode is a little different than, uh, what they'd led people to believe was what was coming. Yeah, it's fourth season, right? Pretty sure. So it's very different, kind of out of the blue. Um, for the most part, I kept up with it 
and then I'd lose it. Then I'd keep up with it, and then I'd lose it again. It's like, it was inching cycles. Like, it took twists and turns of unexpected ways. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um... Oh, kind of going back to the Axel Shane part. We were talking about how people come up with the usernames. How do you guys come up with your usernames, game tags, whatever? It's just one of those interesting things like uh, I've had a few different ones. I've had uh, Grimm's Angel, Grimm's underscore Angel, or Grimm's Little Angel. That's kind of an interesting story a while back from a role play. I've had... Army Brat 007, which has been my traditional old school, um, uh, like, uh, MMORTS, um, video games. And then I've had Zoe Greens, which is my current persona. Um, yeah. And then recently I've been transitioning from Grimm's Angel for my art pages to Inky Paw Print Studios. And so, like, that one, I'm trying to actually incorporate my furry stuff into the art since I'm kind of training that into my art style. It's just kind of interesting how people transition from name to name. Uh, I'm kind of curious if you guys comment in on how you guys found your names or your Sona names or whatever. Ooh, pardon me. I'm a little tired. So, last night, with uh, the video being over 30 minutes, uh, YouTube said, hey, you need to verify your account because your video is past a certain length. YouTube has a verification method? Huh. I thought you already had to verify your email or whatever for a YouTube channel. Okay, sure. It was something interesting, and so I had to go through and then I had to input my cell phone number and stuff. And just one of those, this is weird, but whatever. Um, oh, come on. There we go. Another thought I was having last night. I was making my tea and it's like, why do we become lazy for like certain chores and stuff? Like the only time that I'll do dishes is when I can't fit my electric kettle in the sink to refill it. And it's like, I'll do dishes then and try and clean up the sink to get the kettle in. And I'll start the dishwasher and stuff. Oh, speaking of, I need to empty that. Eh. Anyways. Um, it's the same way with laundry. It's like, um, you get laundry going and you go dump it on the couch or a chair or whatever to fold later and then you forget. And so you go and live your lives or whatever and you're looking for clothes. It's like, oh yeah, I've got clothes on the uh, couch and you go dig through those clothes and get what you need for whatever day. And then you end up leaving stuff in the dryer. Unless you're in an apartment complex, you don't want to leave stuff in the dryer. But we have our own washer and dryer and it's one of those, um solid um no window or whatever and so it's one of those oh crap i'm out of underwear or certain shirts or whatever so you go look and it's like oh yeah i've got clothes in the dryer and you go look in there and you grab clothes it's just one of those why are we lazy <laughs> it's like i guess we have such fast-paced lives that we just don't have time or like the patience like you want to sit down and actually sit and rest for a little bit Mm, I apologize. Ugh, not enough caffeine in my system yet. It's only 2.45. I shouldn't be this tired. Um, yeah, so it's like uh, going from chores to being productive with like artwork and stuff. And it's like, how do people stay productive? How do you guys stay productive? Uh, like with me, I get really distracted easily and I'll kind of bounce between project to project to try and get something done. Like currently I have a reference sheet I'm working on for somebody. <clears throat> Actually, about five reference sheets I'm working on. Um, I have my character that I just finished, my other character, Ian's two characters, and then two other people's uh, characters they want having reference sheets. I've also got a commission and it's just like the commission I'm having a hell of a time because it's like I'm kind of disappointed with it and it's like I also don't know where to go with it so how do you guys like to stay focused and work on your works I'm kind of curious to see other people's opinions um <clears throat> excuse me speaking of productivity 
I'm having this really interesting glitch with my computer. I guess I don't have enough RAM. And so I'm getting this pop up every couple hours saying I'm out of RAM and I need to close Photoshop. I'm just like, well, crap. But um, luckily earlier this week, I got finished. I, I finished ordering my computer parts. I have a new motherboard coming in, a processor. Um, oh yeah, this is another story I'm gonna get into. Uh, motherboard processor. Um, I've got my graphics card. I've got, oh yeah, um, RAM. There we go. The whole reason I'm having memory issues. Um, and then I have two external, or uh, no, two solid state hard drives coming in. And it's like, hopefully this will uh, finish up getting my computer ready. So I can actually work on Photoshop stuff without having it say, oh yeah, you need to close your programs to try and get your uh, memory back up to speed. Really? It's just frustrating. And so, yeah, so I ordered those solid state drives. Uh, Dell had a little bit of a hiccup yesterday where they mispriced some solid state hard drives, like uh, 250 gig solid states. What normally are $100, they had it $20. This went all over in my chat rooms. It was like we were forwarding it around. A lot of people, um, we're buying the hard drive, or no, I gotta get over that. Uh, solid state drives. They're not hard drives, they're different than that. So they're ordering these drives. And we saw on Reddit today that Dell found out that their entire stock had been bought and they noticed the price. And they're going, oh crap. And so they're trying to recall everyone's orders, which is kind of shitty of them. Because it's just one of those situations where you guys screwed up, not us. You should take the fault and, like, agree with your contract already. Because it's like, it's not our fault you botch your um, job. Somebody's going to get fired over this. But it's like they're trying to intercept orders that have already been shipped. It's just, why? No, Dell, why do you do this stupid shit? And it kind of has me pissed off at Dell that they're not, um, not honoring their word. And it's like, it just boggles my mind why they'd be going back on this. And it's kind of, I'm willing to bet it's going to lose quite a few followers for this because, again, it was their screw up, not ours. And we were just taking advantage of the situation. Well, that kind of sounds shitty, but... Yeah, it's messed up. So that's been all over the internet today. And uh, so far, I haven't got, gotten an email yet about my order being uh, revoked. So I'm kind of happy about that and running with it. Um, yeah, I still haven't gotten an email that they've um, recalled my order. So maybe I'm gonna be one of the people who actually gets their order. And uh, one of my other local friends, uh, his order hasn't been recalled yet either. So we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> my throat's dry again from the kitties. I know Dr. Pepper's a little bit um, less soothing than tea, but I'm kind of out of options. So speaking of furs, um, there's some species that are really interesting. Um, one of the characters um, that's, a, that's a really well known for is Telephone. Telephone is the original Dutch angel dragon. You should go look them up. They're really freaking cute. But a lot of the fur community do not like Dutch angel dragons or like angel dragons at all, but particularly Dutchies. And it's just sad because they're really cute um, species. And I like their background and stuff, and they're like their overall personalities. But it's one of those, why hate on something that you didn't create, that you have no reason to demean just because it's really popular. And it's like, this was a really big success. And it's like, they're trying to keep up with um, all of the uh, people that are wanting to create the species. 
it's an open species, but they want you to register uh, your species. So it's like they know and can keep up with all of the uh, characters that use the name Dutch Angel Dragons, also known as D-A-D-D. D-A-D. Um, D-A-Ds, yeah. So it's just frustrating that people are being crappy about that. It's like I've been considering making a, a little... Dutch Angel Dragon because they're like they're so cute and I like their personalities their backstories are really neat because kind of like they haunt graveyards and attach themselves to specific people kind of like guardian angels and like they're uh ethereal ethereal whatever my vocabulary is great but the thing is about reading you don't exactly have pronunciation things so yeah um, <laughs> furries. Um, someone posted a lot of snight in a, um, well, the furry pages that I'm, um, a part of, and kind of a bit of a twist on the whole, uh, five little piggies. And the, uh, phrase pretty much goes, this little furry went to market, this little furry stayed home, this little furry had roast beef. This little furry, furry, furry had none. This little furry went yif, yif, yif all the way home. And yif is a bit of a uh, interesting term in the fur communities. If you're brave, you're welcome to Google it or Urban Dictionary it. It's got a bit of a interesting context and background to it. So don't be insulted. Um... Yeah. Let's see. What have I not talked about? Oh, so <laughs> strange update with um, the cats. This morning with the snow, I was all excited to go play in the snow. Well, kind of. But it's like I'd stayed up all night and I was wide awake at uh, seven thirty in the morning when Ian wakes up. And it's like, hey, I'll go outside and sweep off your car while you're in the shower. He's like, okay, cool. And it's like, I threw bagels in the toaster and I went running outside. This is perfect powder, like snowboarding powder. It's like, I was so excited. I get in his car and I shut the door and half the car dusts itself. I'm just like, oh, this is great. I like this. And it's like, I wish we had a little bit no more because like, this is prime freaking place snow. And it's like, ah. I'm sorry, I'm a kid at heart. I really like snow. Anyways, I finish dusting off the car and I go back in. And I go talk to him in the bathroom while he's finishing getting ready. And I'm kind of peeking the shower because one of the cats is there. Both of the cats are obsessed with the sink and the shower for whatever reason. And I see one of the cats in the bathtub. I ask Ian, where's the other cat? Peek inside the curtain, you'll see. Peek around the curtain. Holy shit, the cat is with him in the shower, just sitting kind of in the dry area, but just sitting there staring at the water. I don't know what these cats are up to, but it's like they're always in the bathtub just looking at the water. And it's like, we'll turn it on and they'll sit there and just watch it. And then they'll walk off and they'll come back and watch the water drip. <clears throat> they're just weird little things. So I put up <clears throat> I apologize. Um, I put up on social media. I was trying to ask um, some of my art friends how they deal with deal with cats. Mm. Mm. Um, in the workspace, like particularly digital artists, because like I've been having this issue lately where Sans, the little boy cat, will climb up on my desk and start pawing at my screen. And it gets really annoying, or he'll sit on my tablet. Little turds got to the point where he'll shove my tablet off, whether I'm at the desk or not, so he can lay there. And so, he's been a real knucklehead about that. And like the cats like to sit in front of the screen, kind of paw at the screen, because they see the uh, mouse icon moving around. And so I was asking people um, what their thoughts were on trying to keep uh, the cats off desk or like not necessarily off the desk but like not messing with the monitors and it's like most of them were suggesting a box or a blanket or whatever and it's like I end up having a good system because I have a 
big receiver for my surround sound sitting on my desk. So I draped a towel over it, and the cat's like laying on it because it's nice and warm. But one of my friends, um, don't take offense to this if you're watching it, but anyways, yeah, people, this is my opinions, my stories, so try not to be offended if you can. If not, whatever, you're not, you're welcome to not watch, whatever. Anyways, so this dude comes on and says, well, the professional workspace needs to stay professional. It's like, if you need to lock your family and your pets out, I'm like, first off, that's really rude because this is my shared workspace with Ian. Second off, we have the cats because of my depression. It's like, I struggle with depression. It's like, I get really lonely at night. And so that's why we have the cats because they give me company at night. So I'll run around and um, cuddle and stuff. So I just found that rude of him to say, and yeah, anyways, it's just one of those, really, man? You're going to lock your own family out of your office just because you need to work. If you're going to have that issue, get a separate studio. Because it's like you can't ban your family from certain spaces in their home just because you've got your business or whatever. It's like, why lock people out? Why lock your family out? I understand you need to get work done. Well, do it when they're not awake, like I'm doing now, or while they're at school or work. It's just, really? Why be rude about that? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of tech and stuff, like earlier with the computer, I've been taking notes on my iPad for ideas for talking on the vlog. <laughs> And writing on an iPad, not typing, but um, writing like with a stylus or finger, as weird as this sounds, cursive is actually easier than uh, print. So I've been kind of using a mix of the two between print and cursive, and it's like, I haven't used cursive in years, besides signature or autographs or whatever. I don't really autograph that much, but like uh, signing receipts and things. And it's just really strange that I haven't used cursive since middle school. And now it's like, it's really helpful to keep notes and things because it's just a smoother method for writing down. And kind of going back to um, tech as well, uh, I've been fighting whether to call these videos, vlogs or podcasts. And I end up looking up the definition of vlogs. Vlog is a video log. And blogs, uh, video logs, video blogs, near choice. And a blog is like a, uh, a record or a literature of certain information. And so it's kind of interesting. And then podcast is a, um, an audio only, no video. So it's like, I found that interesting. And since so many people call their videos podcasts, but that's technically incorrect. And it's like the history behind podcasts was interesting. It had to do with, um, like, I think it was a BBC um, journalist talking about um, um, portable broadcasts. And so it turned into podcasts. And it's like they were also trying to reference iPods. It was like the time where iPods were becoming really uh, popular. So it was just really interesting. Um, also, going back to um, technology, I never finished yesterday with the podcasts about um, millennials in the workplace. And I was talking about how I don't like to put filters on things. Well, it kind of gets a little more uh, technical than that. It's like he was talking about filters uh, in a way like we make everything perfect. And so everybody feels bad on Facebook because their friends are, oh, they're all professional. Oh, they've got kids and stuff. And it's like, I am very honest with my Facebook or try to be and really humorous. So it's very interesting how people try and make the best of their Facebook, make their lives look great. I'm like, why? Make it honest, make it you. This is your opinions and such. And that, that's like part of the thing with like the political stuff. It's like, eh, whatever. It's 
to people's own opinions or whatever. It's like people can be right or wrong, but don't shoot others down for it. And don't make your life freaking perfect. Nobody's life's perfect. Even millionaires don't have perfect lives. Yeah, they've got money out the ass, but they have their own set of problems. Like people telling them they're stuck up in bricks and stuff for having so much money and not doing better things with it. It's complicated. Um, see, so yeah, when I was doing the Google search earlier about podcasts and blogs, um, I started to type in, what is the difference between podcasts and blogs? And you know how Google does the automatic, um, kind of fills in the blank. And, and it was like, um, what is the difference between blank? And it came up with weather and climate. And immediately, I'm sitting there laughing because honestly, some people don't know what the difference between weather and climate is. Like our lovely Senator Jim Inhofe. I grew up like him. I grew up as a military brat, so I completely understand him um, agreeing with uh, or promoting the military. It's like some of his stuff drives me up the wall, particularly that he doesn't believe in climate change. It's like. Are you flipping serious? You don't believe in climate change just because it snows. It's like, oh, the climate's not changing. We have snow. It gets cold. Why, why are the seasons if there's, not, if there's climate change? There's a difference between weather and climate. Weather fluctuates a lot. Climate is five years or longer of a specific a range of temperatures and weather. Climate doesn't change very quickly. It's a over time thing. Weather changes very quickly. It's somewhat predictable, but not. Usually because of what we record as climate. So all the data that we collect influences weather. It's like, oh, this is our rainy season. So expecting rain during such and such time period. Usually like for Oklahoma, that's late spring to early summer. And so it's just one of those, how do people not understand the difference between weather and climate? Another one, though, is just like, really? Mm. Some people need to go back to school, especially science classes. Although I know myself, I myself didn't do necessarily very well in science. But <sighs> why? Why? <laughs> <sighs> mm-hmm. Hello kitties, you're making noise back there. Alright, so... Yeah. I'm almost out of things to talk about for the night. And I made over my 30 minute mark. Yay! Um, Ian is probably going to join tomorrow night for the blog vlog, whatever the hell we want to call this. If you have opinions on what it should be, go ahead and comment down below. Um, one of the last little random things I'm going to throw out is how many of you guys um, do chocolate wrappers and obsess on getting it precisely unwrapped without tearing it? Like, I sat forever with a... Um, a Rolo earlier, unwrapping it and getting it, trying to get it as perfect as possible, unwrapping it without tearing it. Well, there's like small holes in this, but it's like that really can't be helped. But I got so angry or like frustrated because the corner tore on it. And it's like, no, I didn't complete it. <laughs> I remember doing this with Kinder Eggs as a kid before they got banned by the FDA. That one still frustrates the holy hell out of me because my uncle used to live in Germany and would ship advent calendars of kinder eggs and so we loved getting kinder eggs but yeah anyway it's about the tinfoil um maybe that's an ocd thing of mine but i just find it interesting if anybody else does that as well but yeah fda you're bonkers on banning kinder eggs because it's like their whole thing it's like oh it's a choking hazard Shake, 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 shake. You can obviously hear something rattling around inside. Let it be the toy within the plastic or the plastic bobble itself. And it's just 
What? Another one of those. How do you have a brain? Do you not use it? You have this big, wonderful brain that we're not even supposed to be using all of it. Come on, people! Ah! So, yeah. Oh, yeah, speaking of Kinder Eggs, um, something that popped up on the internet, like, within the past couple hours that I've seen was a bunch of Kinder Egg, like, the little um, plastic shell inside have... Uh, washed up on the shore of uh, the shore of somewhere and it's just really interesting like tons of these little um, plastic baubles have shown up I'll have to um, put that in the comments as well um, so yeah anyways guys good night have a good night or morning or well whatever I will see you all tomorrow and hopefully we'll have a nice little guest for the evening if he's feeling better anyways Toodles!